Good morning. Hello and welcome to another episode. Another show. Another. I don't know why I'm like bigging this up as if this is some sort of organized TV production. But maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it is. It's a very cleverly disguised <laughs> improv show. Yeah. It's a, it's a commentary on on recent Animation. TV. Animator life. It's All a commentary right. on, on recent TV in that we're disguising it to not be a TV show, but we secretly are. It's very meta. Yeah, our producer's really, like, um, good. Thanks. Wait, are you our producer? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I try to invent a personality that people I produce like, things. It's Joe! And then, then it's just like, thanks. It's just <laughs> completely erased that potential imaginary <laughs> person. I'm Joe. Now <laughs> I'm Joe. You're Joe. <laughs> Joe Swift. Yeah. Producer man. Joe Swift is an artist. Really? <laughs> yeah, that we that we kind of know. They're really good. The, I, do, do I know them? Maybe. I don't know. I feel like there's a Joe Swift and there's a Nick Swift who we worked with on Heartburner. Heartburner. Yeah. Joe I know Swift. Nick Swift. I think Joe Swift oh, is a I, Twitter I know, I know of Nick Swift. I don't know them. Personally, they seemed cool when we were working with them briefly. <laughs> Dog is a producer, according to his. That's IMDb, true. IMDb. You're IDMB. the producer here. Yeah. Yeah. You're on my level. Hello, Dr Draxerna. Thank you for the follow. Welcome in. You find your new favorite stream channel. New, new favorite streamers. <laughs> wow, Mike. Presumptuous much. No, I'm just spitting facts in here. Wow. I'm, I'm just trying to navigate to the right folder. Don't mind me. Click, click, click. Why are there so many files in this folder? I don't know, man. Oh, I didn't collect pal bros. Go, go get it. I'm doing it. Um. Oh, I see. They're not in alphabetical order. Why would they be? Ah, I found it. Perfect. So today we're going to finish off reviewing the Animal Morning Challenges. Yep. We got just over halfway through yesterday. So I think we have four four left today. All right. Robo Sardi, Steiny, the Bird Brain, and Alrose. Cool. Oh no, Stanny, I'm sorry, your internet's not playing nice today. Damn! The Ed Cray's here! <laughs> Declan, there's India, I'm playing on my new Game Boy. It's green screen, it's beautiful. It's such a chunky console. Man, that brings back good memories. I remember getting the Game Boy Color for Christmas when I was like 13 or something? 13, 14? That was a good present. I spent the entire Christmas playing Pokemon. It was amazing. I think it was Pokemon Silver that I got or something. Damn! I had a purple one. Super effing cool. It made long car trips that much more tolerable. I think all I had on it was Pokemon and Kirby. Because Kirby was also super good. But you for what? For like Game, for the Game Boy? Oh. Kirby in Dreamland. I can't remember all the I didn't have that many Game Boy games either. Pokemon Silver for sure. But your first console was a Game Boy Advance. That's a good one. I had Sonic Advance on it. Which is a really good game. Sonic Advance? Yeah. Oh. Sonic Advance games are really good. I think they get overlooked a lot because they're on handheld consoles, but they're really good. Okay. Ed Crazy, yours was a DS. What was your favourite game for it? I liked playing Layton on the DS. That was fun. Oh, you're waiting for me to switch over so people can see your screen, aren't you? No, I was just... I thought you were doing stuff, so I, 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 I still... I, I am. I okay. 
No rush. I'm just catching up with chat. Pokemon Platinum. Nice. Good choice. Wasn't um Mystery Dungeon and stuff on that as well. You recently bought a limited edition edition 25th anniversary Legend of Zelda 3DS. Holy crap. That sounds amazing. Devin, your first gaming system was a SNES. I was I was a Sega person, so mine was a a master system. But my friend had a had a Nintendo and a SNES, and I was always really jealous because there were a bunch of games I wanted on it too. My first gaming console was the NES. Yeah. What was your favorite game on it? I uh, know. No. no? NES. I had I had the Nintendo Entertainment System, Famicom, or that. So what was your what was your favorite game on it? Batman. Batman. No, um, probably. It's probably one of the Mario's. Mario Three, maybe. Mario Three is yeah, well, classic. It's uh, super cool. One of your favorite NES games was TMNT Two. Which one was that? Was that Tills in Time? I have to look it up now. Nez. TMNT 2. I don't know if I had Zelda. I think if I'd had Zelda, that would have been my favourite. Like the original Legend of Zelda. It's just called Tills 2, the arcade game. It looks so cool! The front cover's awesome! They're all doing their thing. All the skateboards. They're jumping up in the air. Man, that's awesome. I must have been in the middle of like Turtle Mania hype. It's interesting that they all have skateboards, but the skateboard colours don't match the turtles. Like, Donatello has a red and black one, and Raphael has like a purple one, and then Mikey has a blue one. It is, it's just interesting. They didn't choose to match all the colours all the way through. They're not Power Rangers. No, the turtles. I know, but what I mean is like Power Rangers tend to be like, you only get the red things because you're the leader. Anyway. Hello. I'm going to switch your screen over. Okay, do it. I can show people the dope cover for Turtles 2. Alright. There you go. You're playing Dragon Warrior on NES right now. Steiny is awesome. <laughs> cool. Oh, it was Turtles in Time in the US. Man, Turtles in Time's a great game. Is that what that one is? I don't know. Oh. I'm not sure. I just know it looks cool. Get over here. Get over here. Okay, I'm, you should have all the files available to you now. Oh yeah? I'm looking at it. Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it <laughs> is. <laughs> I was expecting Pilebro's file to appear at the bottom, but he appeared halfway through because his name begins with P. Does that mean he's next? Uh, No, I think we'll do the others next and then Palbro last just because I left people hanging yesterday so it feels like I should start with the people I left hanging you know oh I should totally open it in um, clip studio if I'm able to that's what I was doing yesterday give me a sec while I open the I open that Open your heart to the possibilities of CSP. Oh, open your heart to the possibilities of CSP. Yeah, I can sing a thing and then India sings a thing that sounds so much better, but she makes what I did good, but I did I it iterate first. on it, that's all. Now I know you didn't make that up. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's original song by me. I want to be up 
in the place where others are also. <laughs> <laughs> I want to witness with my eyes them doing things. Someone screaming, witness me. <laughs> Look at me. It's Clip Studio. Oh, it's down here. Okay. Thanks, Clip Studio. Any advice for a baby beginner storyboard pro user? Ooh, a baby beginner storyboard pro user, you say? Uh, just do it. Just do it. That's what I want. That's what I want, I think. Um, have fun. Uh, try doing some retro boarding, which is when you take boards that you really like and you try to recreate them. Um. Because that often shows you shortcuts and cool things that you can use. Um, and it's very helpful to try and recreate a shot because then you can look at them side by side and be like, what's my missing? What's the difference between these two directly? So that's a really good learning tool. You can also retroboard, not from boards, but from episodes or films themselves and try and recreate what you thought the storyboards would have looked like. Um, Watch lots of stuff with your storyboard goggles on and look at how how things cut and how your eyes led from one scene to the next and how the different framing of stuff makes you feel. And yeah, have fun and express yourself. The coolest thing about doing art of any kind is that you're going to have a very unique approach and way of doing it and you should embrace that and have fun with that because that's what makes your board special is that you'll bring your perspective to it your perspective in terms of kind of your world view and, and your sense of direction yeah um, Wilmo Willa says all Adventure Time boards are available online on Kingo Fu and Google so find the kind of series you want to board on whether that's comedy or horror or adventure, whatever it is, um, find those kind of boards and then retro board a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, my, my clip studio is still starting up. I will let you know. Well, you'll see it on my screen when it comes up, but... Well, until then, I'll show them things. Okay. Oh, it might have hay up in. It's happened! Oh ho ho! Perfect! Let me just navigate to the folder and we'll get these reviews underway! I just realised that Declan's alarm's going off. You know the radio one? It's going off even though he's not here. Declan, I can't believe you. I can't believe you've done this though. You can't believe you've done this. You've left it with us. No, he's left. Us with it? Us with it, yeah. <laughs> We're not locked in here with it. It's locked in here with us. Okay. So we do Robosades first. Looks like we've got a Cerberus, guys. Let's do it. Doggy. Yeah, exactly. Dark Falls like, Buffy, can you get that? Turn the alarm off. Ooh, cool. This is fun. Fun design. I'm doing a stretch. I did it. Your squeaky ass chair, man. I'm sorry, I can't help it squeaking. This is really fun. Um, I like the the use of simple shapes. It doesn't feel like there's um, there's too much detail on it either, which makes it perfect for animation. Yeah, like look it's got... at that really soft triangle. Yeah, that's cool. It's a triangular boy. It is. It's a really fun shape design, like very appealing straight off the bat. Um, I like the fact that the top dog has this nose ring hmm. to differentiate it as a top dog. That's super fun. I do think this would be a really fun design to animate. 
I mean, love that one in motion, like the way this one. Uh, yeah, that's a beautiful drawing. It is. All of these are beautiful drawings, Robo Sardi. I like the choice to give little stripes along the back as well. Like the shape language is kind of blunt, but also it's got these sharp markings that make it feel a bit more dangerous. The baguette colors. <laughs> don't you dare baguette. You don't hear a squeaky chair. Wow. Okay. I'm impressed with the microphone. There. Okay. Listen, everybody listen. You ready? You, you hear that? Do, yeah, you're not doing anything to the microphone levels. Nothing. That's you good. You don't hear it. I'm really happy because it's really annoying, <laughs> you guys, so... It's like... Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Anywho. Um, I, yeah, I think this is really nice. This rice ball shape we've got going on here. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like an onigiri. It's... We get this nice triangular with these uh, these sharp points, but we also get um, the fact that the triangle is blunted. Mm -hmm. So it kind of feels like he's dangerous, but also he's a good boy. Yeah, you, you know, you, you feel like you boy. could pet him, and he would be he would be receptive to pets. You know, so the shape language is really nice, really strong. It's a nice idea to have this type of dog for Cerberus. Because you can have, you know, those big beefy arms turned in because of the breed of the dog. And it works really well to feed into this big triangular shape. Mm. You know, you can flow straight into the arms. Because it's like, it's not a bulldog, is it? It's, it's kind of like a bulldog. I don't kind know of. dog breeds very well. Yeah, it's sort of bulldog it is. But like, that's super nice that you can just go whoop, straight up because it gives artists a nice shorthand that they can use in storyboarding and such. Like, the, if I was going to adjust this, um, this character, mm -hmm. I would say that um, at the minute, there's not a lot telling me about, say, the character's history or personality mm. beyond kind of the stoic facial expression. Like, I'm not sure if each of the heads have a different personality. If, um, gotcha. yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the relationship is between the heads, if there is any relationship between the heads. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, whether this dog is guarding hell or whether it's just some kind of cool monster i'm not sure um kind of where it's from what its environment is what its its potential owners might be like if it has an owner i think that kind of stuff you could you could weave into the design how would you do that if you, if you were tasked with this design brief what would you do well first of all i'd, I'd figure out the the uh, inner workings of the character, like the the details that are going to influence the design. Like, is this a Cerberus that is guarding hell? Mm -hmm. Is it guarding treasure in a dungeon? Like, mm -hmm. is it, you know, what what is the function of this of this Cerberus? And is is it a good boy? Are all heads good boys? <laughs> is one head a bad boy? <laughs> you know, is it? guarding of its own volition or does it have someone it's guarding for mm -hmm. you know looking at stuff like that so say we were to go with like off the bat that this Cerberus is guarding the gates of, of hell or Hades or you know the underworld as it were I'd try and weave a few of those elements into the design yeah so for example, rather than giving it a gold ring, I might give it like a bone ring or something. All right. Okay. I see that. You know, if you had something like... Yeah. 
You could have a bone ring and have the other two heads attempting to like bite a bone ring. <laughs> well, <laughs> bones are fun because it's a dog as well. Yeah. But also, you could uh, convey scale. Like if that's a human bone, and this is a human skeleton. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm not very good at drawing skeletons. I need to practice my skelly wags. Then suddenly the scale is way bigger. Mm -hmm. Depending on how big you thought it was before. You know, but stuff like that tells us more about the character, like how big they are. And also it's thematically appropriate to their environment. And then if we're down in Hades, you know, why not like give it some supernatural elements like a fire mohawk but the fire could be an unnatural green or something this is just me spitballing I feel like I feel like with the open um, mouth version on the, the movement one that the mouth shape and the feel of the face is slightly different from the colored model is that do you feel like that's the same um you might have to elaborate a little bit i just you see how they have like the the w um uh, i really like that part of the design in, in there i don't re i'm not really feeling that it might just be like with closed mouth you just don't see that shape but I, it's like i think not... that's what it is yeah but you like it being a bit sharper, yeah. Essentially, yeah, I like that so kind could, of triangle mouth thing. Because you could just sharpen that up a little bit, like that. Yeah. You know, and then these markings down here could be more like ribs, more like rib markings. Um, as in, they would still be triangular, but you could think of them more like almost the markings are depicting bones. Hmm. You know, it's just like everything thematically is kind of starting to weave together a little bit. Give one of the heads a cone of shame. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Poor doggo. And then, you know, I feel like we could do something, you know, for the tail. Make it a little bit more hellhound if we were going for, like, Underworld Guardian. Mm -hmm. So, like, those little tweaks are the kind of things that I would be like, now it's specifically guarding hell. And it's a huge hound that is, like, part demon it just makes like the design a little more specific uh, Mike's walked off I don't know why oh he's got you've got push-ups thanks for communicating that to me Mike <laughs> thank you for my squats Ben I'm gonna do them one sec heh <laughs> heh gotta finish his tail I didn't. I was purposely not saying or doing anything because Declan was like, I need to hear your suffering. <laughs> like, no. I will not give you my suffering. <laughs> Are those like shackles or something on, on its wrist? Yep. Uh, cool. Exactly. Because now we're getting into like the nature of its owner. Except maybe we have this is broken. So it's like, oh shit, it was, it was owned by someone. But now it's effing loose. Now it's free in the wind.
Ed Craze is saying, would three tails be too much? And it started me thinking, like, what if it had, you know, 12 legs, three heads, three tails? <laughs> three tails, I think, is kind of interesting, actually. Yeah. That's... Because that's sort of like a cat of whatever tails whip design thing, and it's like a torture device, which would make... Kinky. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I think that's a it's a nice idea, and it's a nice um, comparison too. Considering that hell is meant to be where you're kind of tortured for eternity, yeah. having the tail almost look like a torture device, super cool. In the original myth, you think Cerberus had a snake tail. Oh, cool! But you hardly see that in adaptions. Adaptations. Oh. We could do that here. Let me just do some squats one sec. I'm gonna look that up. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I just noticed a cool design detail that Robo's already put on here too. Where the top head has pointed ears and the bottom two heads don't. Ah, that's cool. I love that. I'm going to curl these ears a little bit more to make them more devil-like. Oh, I found one design where they've like merged the three heads together. Ooh. Oh, it's creepy. Oh, yeah, on on Cerberus Mythical Beasts of Legend, it's like uh, kind of a wolf-like thing with like Medusa heads of hair and a snake tail. That's cool. I'm just noticing like nice little design things like um, Robosadi has got the left tooth poking out of the left head, the right tooth poking out of the right head, and both teeth poking out of the top. Hmm. That's super cool. I love little design, um, little design elements like that. It's super elegant. Really nice job, Robosadi. So if you were like animating this and you cut into one of the heads, you would know immediately which one it was. Yeah, super small differences, but that means you can tell them apart. But yeah, like, I fear it's getting a little bit complex. Hmm. But I think it's a, it's a nice illustration of the kind of stuff you could potentially build on top of to give the character a little bit of history and a little bit more depth and help the character tell you more about, like, where they're from, <coughs> what their kind of attitude is. Because <coughs> yes. um, even though I think that probably this design has too many elements now, too much going on, Mm -hmm. For it to be as simple and elegant as it was before. Um, I think if you looked at it now, you would be like, okay, this is a dog from hell. It's broken loose of its owner. It's huge. And it's like not to be crossed. Cool. Which is, is more than it was telling us before. But I do think that um, we have too many design elements happening right now. So maybe can pick, <clears throat> pick a couple of these. Yeah, or find like a, a nicer way to weave them in, you know. But I think the the overall uh, shape design of the creature is is really nice. I think when it comes to from the side, don't be afraid to give it a little bit of a neck crook like this, rather than go straight up into it like a ski slope. Just because it'll give you like a little bit more head mobility. Tap that angle. And 
think here you could totally fit like the other head on being like this is my drawing of the dog <laughs> <laughs> doesn't look threatening at all it's just like whoa how woo Um, so Robo Sardi for this challenge said... Oh yeah, please uh, read out what they, they wrote. Um, I had a lot of fun with this challenge. This was the first time I approached character design with symbolism in mind. I tried to tie in a lot of door motifs with Starbirth. Heck yes! Let's see if you find them all. The biggest struggle was three heads. Um, trying to make a design that balanced the three heads without looking busy and on top of that posing the character was tough. <clears throat> and then they've got spoilers for the design I think they say what, where the four motifs oh. are. It, we, we totally should have read this first. Ah. But we could have gone into it knowing. Mm. Um, I, I got carried away with the drawer but hold on let me start a new one and we'll look for the doors. So, first one I is the they, knocker. Yeah, the door, yeah. It's super cool. And I love the idea of basing the character design on a door because obviously um, Cerberus is, is a guard, so it makes a lot of sense, right? Right? Sorry, what was that? said basing Cerberus on a door makes a lot of sense because Cerberus is a god. Yes, yes, for sure. Super cool. Do you see any more? Well, I would assume that a lot of the shape language mm -hmm. is kind of like a door, which is why we have these square mouths. That's kind of my assumption. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm looking for others because we have we have the kind of triangular shape at the front. I mean, everything is very squarish, so I could just outline every square and be like, "This could be a door," but I feel like it's probably more specific than that. Let's see what this. Yeah, give us some hints. Um, I use door shapes for the heads and the body. Added a nose ring to simulate a knocker for the door, yep. and the dark colors on the muzzle are meant to resemble a keyhole. I see. There we go. Let me outline this. Boop, 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 boop. Super cool. Colors, yeah, yeah. Colors were inspired by a Greek dick clay vases and the stripes on his back back to other interpretations of Cerberus of him having a mane of snakes on his back. Super awesome. I think the uh, the stripes just work really well too because they add a bit of sharpness into the design. I love the the knocker. I love the keyhole mm -hmm. idea. That's so cool. And it's it's awesome too how natural it all feels. Yeah. You know, it doesn't feel overdone. It feels interwoven rather than slapped on. Yes. I think it'd be fun to do some some playing with the door motif in the negative space too, if possible. Thank you for the follow. Thank you very mm. much. I think that's a good idea. Negative shape design is really, really, really cool to see. Yeah. You know, looking at this like almost like a gate. I think would be a fun idea to explore. And you could maybe get something of a handle shape into the tail. If you wanted to like thin that out a little bit.
make it feel a little bit more like it could potentially be a handle shape. Especially if you had that um, as a different colour. I think like that's a really nice successful um, example of you finding a motif that you think works with the character and say something about what that character is yeah and then weaving that into the shape design of the character so super good job Robosadi like really really cool to see like where that design has influenced Yeah, I think this is super successful and really nice. Lovely yeah. design. Good job, Robo. Who's up next, India? Yeah, now you imagine the gate if hell is not guarded by Cerberus, but is Cerberus. Interesting, right? It'd be cool. Yeah, imagine the gateway forms between his two paws, front paws, and you have to like walk under his head to go through it. It's just like you have to get past Cerberus, so Cerberus is the door, is mm. the gateway. Yeah. So you defeating them is you you getting past that. All right, let's have a look. So let's read Steiny's thing first this time. Sure. Uh, I learned that I like to do intricate internal line work in perspective. I think I hate myself or something because I keep doing it. Help. <laughs> I mean, that's fun. That sounds fun to me. As long as you enjoy doing it. Look at this. This is awesome. Super cool, Steiny. I really, really love the um, the icicles through the heart. Yeah. Like, that's a very explicit, but very, very fun visual metaphor right there. You know, that's thinking with portals. You know, I like the fact that you've hidden the eyes as well. So there's like almost an element of tragedy as well as an element of deception going on. You know, the, the pointed shape language is really fun. The fact yeah. that the the thinness of the character feels almost brittle. Like she could snap. And then like these flowing uh, cloves that feel like winds and tornadoes spiraling around her. That's really, really cool. Yeah, super, super fun. Even the small detail in the fact that the fur feels like it's blowing to the left on this side and to the right on the top side yeah. to add that twist in and make the character feel more twisted is super cool. Like, really love the way that you're taking this uh, design wise and the way you're weaving those metaphors into the design the curling of the um the fingers is like with the wind blowing as well it is it's very uh, dr zeus the curling of the fingers the curling of the fingers sounds like the type of a poem or something so when it comes to um kind of simplifying the design a little bit that's the wrong color <laughs> um Pink just for animation yeah there's a couple of things i think you could like shave off as being unnecessary i think the core of the character is super cool though um mainly the uh, the two trails of hair at the top i think are kind of unnecessary mm -hmm. um it might be that you are trying to show the uh, the wind, the strength of the wind, to have those in, in movement all the time, but it doesn't really feel like, to me, it's adding anything to the design. Yeah. I'd probably rather just make the hair a little bit longer so you can get one of those shapes going with that. Just 
just because if I was animating it, I'd be like, ah, oh, the hair twizzlies. I have to do the hair twizzlies. No. You could maybe have um, a couple of less. Um, you see the curved lines over the face. You could have maybe one or two less of those just to simplify. Have the same motif, but not necessarily have as many. It's easier to draw. Mm -hmm. So we could go with this. And this. And then have that sharp jaw come in. Yeah. I love the shape design that you're using here. Like, it feels like there's so many different, um, different shapes here that collude to ice and water and snow that you've woven into the design in a really nice way. Feels like icicles hanging down, like the nose and the chin. Really cool. Yeah, and then you can get a nice little bit of overlap in here too. Where the um, hair overlaps the face at the top of the design, but then the neck overlaps the hair at the bottom to give the hair a bit of dimensionality and make it feel less like a flat element. So we can see that this joins onto the back of the neck, mm -hmm. whereas the two front bits are curling around the side of the face. I think these are genius. Um, I kind of feel like we need to draw through though to make sure these are lining up. I feel like maybe you could have a few a few fewer of them as well. Um, maybe stick to two or three rather than having four. I think once I see one stick through the chest and I see four in the back, I'm kind of expecting to see more poking through the chest. Mm. But I'm not seeing it. Or you could go along the motif of like there's one main one and then the scale of the others are smaller, so you can feel that first, like that main impact through the chest, and then the others feel more like... They're just stuck in the back. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, think so. That'll that's... add a nice bit of variance with the, uh, the sh size of them as well. So you can have... And I'm lowering this one a little bit because otherwise it feels like it's kind of stuck almost into the base of the neck. Yeah. Dead. And I'm trying to like draw everything down into the same point. So everything like converges. If that makes sense. Mm And then I'd, I'd lose probably the smallest one and just have the other two be smaller, like Mike was saying, than the main one. I wonder, has this character been stabbed in the back? Because I kind of love this metaphor that's going on here. I'm going to put Converge. So you know what I mean. Converge and simplify. Shit. 
shapes are super duper nice. Um, let's see. I wonder at the need for the armbands. Uh, whether that is something we can either use asymmetrically or whether it's something we can potentially lose altogether. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Steiny, I think the icicles is like my favourite element too. I think that's a really wonderful idea. Yeah, I'd, I'm wondering whether these are adding anything to the design. Yeah. Not sure either. And whether it might be better just to have her blue all the way along. Let's have a try and see. Do you feel a sense of a little bit of disconnect between the limbs and the um the like the upper torso that we see? Um I don't know. I don't think I'm feeling it as keenly as you are. Okay. Um, but I can draw through them anyway. I do feel like the uh, limb which is furthest away from us is much thinner than the the limb out to the side. Mm -hmm. Move that elbow up a little bit. Like, does it, how's that, Mike? Is that making you feel better? Yeah, yeah. To just draw through them. Yeah, drawing through is like a superpower. <laughs> it makes all my drawings better when I draw through. So uh, always, always do that. Um. See, and when it comes to the leg, I think we could just add a bit of definition to it. Um, I'm kind of seeing her hovering. Yeah. I don't know if that was the intention, but mainly because I can't see, um, like how you would be able to walk on the feet. Yeah. So I kind of like the idea of her hovering around because that gives you the freedom to make these feet as kind of pointed as you want make them even just like icicles themselves um plus the feeling of the dress and the, the kind of blizzardy tornado thing feels like she's being lifted yeah exactly it feels like you would have stuff being blown away underneath her um but i'd probably just add a little bit of definition to these legs so they're not just because at the minute they're very closely travelling parallel lines the end in points mm -hmm. and because the limbs are so thin and everything's ending in a point it makes it um, it makes it quite tricky to draw for animation because all the lines are so close together and they're all tapering so much into one another you know that just adding a little bit of beef on there as something for the artist to latch on to is being okay I know where I am on the limb because I'm at the calf right now and then the calf tapers it into the foot which then tapers like outward into the heel and inward to the toe rather than it just being one long line mm -hmm. don't know if that makes sense um, I feel like I followed what you were saying But doing the same kind of thing with this where you're adding like a little bit of definition to the foot here just to give people something to latch onto in terms of drawing the shapes so i'm like simulating the widest part of the foot yeah i think that helps a lot you know, and it just gives you a few landmarks that you can ping off while drawing and a nice way to kind of shorthand it that isn't a very, very, very long triangle. Uh, I love this this spiral on the dress. 
super duper cool. Like maybe you want to add the inside there. But I really like the way that the cloves are working with the character. Yeah. Let's see if this is another sleeve like over here. Then I would just give it a bit of a harder edge. So that that's a little bit more apparent. And yeah, I think that's the notes I would have for this one. Like it's all just um, refining and clarifying a little bit because I think the underlying design here is really nice. Um, you might be able to have a little bit more fun with the mouth shape in terms of like really pushing that displeased scowl. Yeah, nice job, Slidy. And let me just check the, the front. It feels like the front view is a little, a little bit more tricky. Um, like you'll really want to work out how this garment works and how it wraps around. Like, what does it look like from the back? How does it function from the side? And for the uh, for the face here, I think. The way that it feeds into the the hair, you can make it feel a little bit more natural. So, remembering that you have these nice hair landmarks to lean on, where the hair's going to come around the side and almost cradle the face here. And then you can have the face go straight into that. kind of thing and just simplify what you're trying to do there a little bit and then rather than have the uh, the hair kind of curve over in a flat top just have it do the thing that you want those little trails to do so you can maintain a strong shape there like strong and assertive yeah and then maybe with those uh, top lines that you have detailing the interior shapes of the hair rather than have those go straight along because parallel lines are kind of boring you could give it a twist. That's cool. Instead. I was going to suggest as well, yeah. So that the twist motif goes along the interior lines too. Might be more fun. The twist! There we go. Yeah, awesome job, Steiny. Super cool design. Yeah, yeah. Who do we have up next, India? Oh, let me let me have a look. Uh, we hire Zeb. 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 <laughs> We've got some reference as well. Let's see. Uh, ah. Did Zeb say anything on the form? Yeah. Yet again, I thank you for this cool opportunity of doing something I usually don't. I chose Icarus, and after doodling a bunch of things from a dead Greek Icarus drowning and becoming an ocean spirit to a half-mounted wax figure Icarus, I settled upon a Guatemalan Maya-inspired Icarus. Ooh. 
My favorite part is the hair. With magic lava wings that can be summoned and sprouts out of her back. The fiery flames tone down quickly though to make up for feathery wings for ease of animation. No one wants to animate constant lava fire wings. Thank you, Zeb. <laughs> if she is not careful and overuse them, they can burn out, which would leave her falling to her doom. Um, it was a challenge to simplify these crazy Guatemalan designs, but I tried to have easy patterns and keep the colorful spirit. My best friend was Guatemalan, so I, I inspired so I inspired from the woven shirts and gifts he used to bring me in stories his mother would tell us as kids. Aww. It was fun. Pretty sure I kept it to three hours, so it just it's just the start. Can't wait to elaborate more. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day. Aww, Zeb. This is awesome. I love seeing all these um, design influences. So cool. And Guatemala, what a fun place to go for this. Yes! So let me zoom around and we'll have a look at some of some of these. So this is, uh, is this Quetzalcoatl? I'm trying to remember the name of the, the god, like the, the great sky snake. That's, I think that's Aztec, which is probably a bunch different. Uh, let's, let's but have I a don't check. Know. Huh. I don't know what difference between Guatemalan and Aztec would be. Uh, yeah, the Aztecs, and you're right, it's Aztec. Uh, Quetzalcoatl was, as the name indicates, a feathered serpent, a flying reptile, much like a dragon, who was a boundary maker and transgressor between earth and sky. So that's a cool place to go. Do you know what? Um, he's so a god known as the plume serpent is a mix of bird and rattlesnake and his name is a combination of the Nihutl words for Quetzal, the Emerald Plume Bird and Kohal or Serpent. He is known as Kukulkan into the Mayans and uh, Gukumat to the Quiche of Guatemala. So I think it is the same It's the same concept. deity. Yeah. Yeah, super cool. And I think uh, choosing with Icarus to take influences from a, a god who's a boundary maker between the earth and sky is a super cool place to go with it because it ties really strongly thematically into Icarus who of course wants to break the boundary between earth and sky Do you know what? What? A plumed serpent of a mix of a bird and a rattlesnake sounds an awful lot like a fucking dinosaur Yeah When like Thousands of years later, people are like, wait, dinosaurs had feathers, though. And and these cultures back then are like, yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. So we're looking at like these, these awesome contrasting color schemes here, like really bright, funky colors um, that are in both the, the fashion and the art and the deity itself and then there's some influences from super colorful birds we've got some some waxy and fire influences here birds diving into water super cool how does water play into the design mike to i feel like you might have said something about that and i want to make sure i don't forget Uh, I don't think I'm not sure it explicitly does. He will say yes. Other okay. Than, will say yes. No, 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 no explicitly worded water stuff. Okay. So let's have a look. So this is some of the inspiration. Volcano. Is we have this erupting volcano. Wow, this is beautiful. Look at these colors. I like that you said volcano. Like I had influenced you there. Volcano. Volcano. This is some of the. Uh, the clothing and everything. These cute, cute little goobers. So traditional dress in Guatemala. Wee. So, weepy, weepil. Is that how you pronounce it? I'm probably really butchering it. A shirt made of two rectangular pieces woven on the back strap, bloom with a hole cut out for the head. The sides are sewn together with openings for the arms. And faja, a handwoven belt or sash used to hold up the court. 
and oh, quarter, quarter. A single long woven piece of fabric worn as a skirt. Cool, so this will be what um, Zeb is dressing the character in. Cool. Broken lines represent a serpent, which is an important and religious symbol. The serpent is revered by the Mayans because it's seen as the mover of the sun, moon, and stars across the heavens. It's also a symbol of rebirth and renewal. So broken lines is what we're looking for too. And then have a look at this, which I think is the final character. Whoa. So I love the way that you've taken like the blocky shapes that come with that kind of Guatemalan inspired fashion. Mm -hmm. And you've used that on the face as well. So the face feels like it's built from blocky shapes almost. Yeah. Super beautiful. Um, let me just get back to Twitch. I can see why uh, Zverbrain likes the hair most. It, yeah, the hair's very cool. The hair feels very birdy. I think, is that like a snake head shape? Or for the fringe? Like, Look, it is a snake. Hold on, let me... It's a snake. It's, sn <laughs> it's a snack. <laughs> it's a sneak. Super cool. Let me. That's awesome. Ah, I keep filling That's with the wrong super color. Super cute. So there's a lot of appeal there. Yeah. So. A derpy snake head. For yeah. the yeah, for those who don't know what Mike and I are talking about, we're talking about. Ha! Hi, everybody. I'm a snake. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That that's oh, that must be intentional. Yeah, I can't imagine that it's not. Um, Love it. Super duper cool. And then I like the way you've exaggerated these shapes um, of the clothing as well. You know, let me just rub this out for a sec. So I have more room. The way that this like pings up above the shoulders. Like, nice appealing design, very simple shapes, good for animation. To have that. And it's, then, a, um, it's an angular heart, which is nice. It is, yeah. I am wondering um, whether... Like, I would be tempted to have the points going the other way somehow. Just because, to me, this looks like a downward arrow. And I feel like Icarus would be better represented by an upwards arrow. Mm. Um, unless you're like deliberately alluding to the fact that Icarus is going to fall, you know, which is totally fair. Um, I'm not quite sure how I do that because I like, you know, the shapes you've got here are really nice. So figuring out how to do that would be an interesting challenge. You know, it would probably involve doing something oh, oh. like this. And then it's all upward arrows and downward arrows. Yeah, just trying to get more upwards in there and I put the trim on the bottom instead so the emphasis is on the up arrow. But I don't know if that works as well. Like that's the thing is like I don't think if it's as strong visually. Mm -hmm. um, the intent of the design I think is stronger, but the actual visuals of the design isn't. So you'd want to find something where you can marry the upward arrow into a way which makes a nice shape design like this, because you wouldn't want to lose a nice strong shape like this. You know. Yeah. I think you you saying it alludes to the fact that they're constantly trying to avoid falling. There's a good kind of symbolic link there. Like there's constantly a force that wants to pull them down. Yeah. In which case, um, you'd want to contrast the force of the cloves constantly pulling them down with the uh, the wings pulling them up. So you'd probably want to get some upward arrow motifs into the wings or into the character design below the clothes. Have you also noticed that the character design has pink and blue? Yes. <laughs> it's very Zeb. Look at these. These are cool. 
I love can seeing you, people working in different mediums as well. Can you bring back the um? Can you unwhite out it, please? Yeah. She has wings made of lava, and then it looks feathery to ease up the anim. I love I love seeing people work in paints. It's so cool. So I would say that, like. Comparing and contrasting the watercolor, like the photograph and stuff, like to the actual design, can you can you look at the, the like the more natural colors of like the top left design is has way more appeal for me. I feel like with the way that it's been digitally colored, it's way too vibrant. It's way too flashy in the um between the pink and the blue. Um, whereas I, I much prefer the more natural coloring. Of the more natural materials, I think I think dial it back because the the um, the pink and the blue is in the whole design taking all of the focus and it's taking it away from like the hair and the face design and the wings by um, having them so vibrant. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I really like the way that when you have the pink and the red working together. Um, it almost feels like the wings feed into this yeah. design. I, I really like that. That's super nice. Like, it's got a really nice flow to it, I think. That works super nicely. And yeah, I can see actually, um, I think designs like this, where we have these uh, uh, triangle patterns here, these feel like they have upward momentum. Yeah. So, She's got them on the skirt, but I think I prefer them on the Yeah. I prefer them on the top and to keep the skirt plainer. Yeah. Um, because the top is the thing which has a downward momentum, so that would balance that out. And then you could oh. keep the skirt more simple. Yeah. Um, I think, which would not draw attention to it. I like this diagonal thing we've got going on I think keep it going with this uh, this arm brace too because not only does it denote movement but it feels like just an upward pull on it almost mm -hmm. like I'm wondering if I might tilt it the other way so that everything is like going upwards and inwards You see what I mean? Yeah. Whoa. So all of those shapes are leading leading us up the body to the face. I think the only element of the design that I'm not jiving with 100% is... Are those um, yeah, tail feathers? the tail feathers. And I understand why you put them on makes complete sense like you're going with a bird motif and they are like they are sick they are symbolic of the the bird tail feathers which I makes complete sense they just don't feel like they naturally um flow into the design yeah they're sort of um they're they're competing with the silhouette of the wings and they're also like competing with the silhouette of the her her leg, well, mm -hmm. plus the the choice to make them white, I'm not driving driving with. Yeah, like you could, <laughs> what you could do is you could turn the um, you could turn the legs into pants, and get that shape in by making the tail feathers kind of become the legs. Yeah. So it's not a separate element. It's this. that goes straight into it instead um, and get them in that way um, or you could just give them like a way more defined shape potentially like I'm wondering if you like laid them out a bunch and really separated them from the rest of the design if they might feel better 
Uh, they do feel kind of like an afterthought though. Like if I was going to be drawing this design, they would be the part I would forget every time. And then have to like add on at the last minute and be like, oh no, but they don't work with the pose now. I feel like an additional design element is subtracting from the overall. Yeah. Overall strength of the design. Yeah, I think, I think even though they're cool, you could leave them out. Maybe on the back of the skirt, you could put like a little reference to them. Like you could have this belt tie up at the back. This is, imagine this is the back, please. <laughs> to give it something like this, so it's not interfering with the silhouette. But you're making like a little nod. Yeah. To the tail feathers. Like reducing the importance of their contribution. Yeah. It so that in favor of that clear silhouette. Um, because I think everything here is super strong. I'm just shorthanding this. But yeah, thinking about how artists are going to shorthand it too is fun. Like the Cerberus design, because of the, the simple shapes it's made up of, mm -hmm. super easy to shorthand. Like, I would just be like, triangle dog. <laughs> there he is. Wow. Triangle dog. You got the heads in the wrong arrangement, but I kind of like them. Look, it's Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <There's a server laughs> I kind of like them that way. It feels <laughs> more derpy. <laughs> My goodness. There we go. But yeah, super easy to shorthand. So thinking about how artists are going to do that is uh, always really helpful when you're designing for animation. All they wish is... Uh, everyone they're having a good rest of the day. Oh, thank you, Ola. Thanks, Ola. Thanks for coming by. You are wah wah. You have an awesome day, Ola. Sending greetings from Ireland. Sending you warm vibes. How's the temperature for everyone right now? Is everyone freezing? I'm kind of chilly. Are you chilly? It's, yeah, it's pretty cold. It's pretty Did cold. you turn the heating completely off? Um, no. Yeah, I um. did. Put it back on timed. <laughs> okay, I will. You silly goober. So yeah, and I love the uh, the face design here. Like I said, it feels feels very Incan, feels very Mayan, feels very Guatemalan to have these like blocky shapes. I'm I'm a big fan of that, and I think the hair is genius. Oh, like cool. having that feathered serpent. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, it's really cool. It might be too much, but you could add like a ponytail for the rest <laughs> of a serpent. So she's she's flying. It's like, <laughs> but that might be too much. Like it might be just like the tail feathers, mm -hmm. just adding one too many elements to the design. You know that you don't necessarily need. So pinch Ooh. of salt that one, um, which means take it with a pinch of salt anyone who doesn't understand my India-isms. Oh, it snowed in Iceland. Whoa! Oh, I see. That's nice. That the um, wings underlap under the poncho here. Super nice. Yeah, lovely. Lovely design. Oh, yeah, animal mouth shape hairdo. Right yeah. there, we're saying it. The hair is my favorite part too. I think that's super unique and a really cool design element for the character. Yeah. I think you can run with that. I think the part right now which isn't feeling super iconic is kind of the body design. I think that's mostly like a costuming thing. Yeah. Um, so just refining that a little bit. You know, for three hours so I think you've already hit on one of the key elements of the character which is this cool face and hair design. Love it. 
yeah love it i'd love to see this developed further if you want it to because i think you're really onto something awesome job zeb thank you so much for submitting and i hope this was helpful even if most of it was just us geeking out and then we have pal bro Pal he's bro. a pal, he's a bro, he's a real good fella. He's a pal bro fella. Pal bro fella. It's opening. You give it a sec. Oh, come on computer, you can do it. I believe, I believe, I believe in the power of my computer. Ooh, Ooh we have a snow queen. Let me, let me just, I'm going to check through them and make sure I'm not um, missing anything. Okay, I think this is the first sheet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's have a look. We have a list. I like that Floofy is on the list immediately. So. I'm trying to read this. And Anderson notes. I don't I, 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 Oops. I have notes. Okay, anyway, they're notes. <laughs> Tired slash bright eyes. Fine, beautiful, made of blinding, twinkling eyes. Hairy. Uh, has icy <laughs> glass mirror shards. Imposing. Broad shoulders. This is like all the things under imposing. Tall, powerful, controlling, in control. Uh, Temper wise. Menacing. Cool. I like, I like where you're going with these. Fluffy, Nordic, Regal, Snowflake, Icicle, Frostbite, Animate, the Easy. Easy Blender. to animate. Oh, well, it wasn't on screen. Blender, Easy to animate, Frostbite, Icicle, Snowflake, Regal, Nordic, Fluffy. Why are you read it out of it? Sorry. Things to fix. Ears too pointy, outfit too boring, too many... Tails... <laughs> Tails slash poof. Okay. Distracting outfit. Outfit too stiff. Boring pose. To keep. Hair swooshes cheeks. White factions. Black skin. Regals. Regalness. Look for. Dream twist. <laughs> I'm very we good should at look this. at the character now. Wait a second. You should read what Pablo wrote. Oh, yeah. Because that might clarify a little bit. Oh my goodness, Mike. Halbro says, I learned a lot about making decisions and grounding mental pictures and ideas. Wanted to create a cold power for elegant deity. Experience the progress that comes from not just going to the final design made and experimenting farther. I feel like I could keep improving the design if I invested more time into it. I failed at keeping the design simpler for animation than this one. I'd strive to simplify it in the next design. Nice. Nice. Lemon and Orange says, I love looking for Dream Twist. <laughs> Me too. Dream Twist is my favorite. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure it's something really obvious that I'm just being a dork about. So yeah, I, I love the uh, snowflake, uh, the snowflake shapes here on the headpiece and the snow shards here on the headpiece. It's nice to see those ice shapes making their way in there. Mm -hmm. I really like this design element of the big, big floofy, like, bust, bosom, Collar. Bozum. I don't know what you call it. Like it's almost like a shoulder shrug. Uh, um, a, a shroud. No. It's it's great because number one, it's almost like some kind of villain or princess collar. It yeah. also like very much says it's cold. Yeah. But she can handle it. Because it's open. Yeah, it's it's great, and of course, it's it's seductive. It's confident. It's you know. It's fabulous, which the Snow Queen is. And I like the way that you're overlapping that as well. Let me... Overlapping these shapes together. Whoop, whoop, whoop. With this big fluffy collar. And then these arm drapes. It's nice the way that these shapes all feed into one another. 
overlapping one another. Because that feels very like um, fractal and snowflakey. Yeah. To have that happening. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I'm into yeah. it. Um, let's see. This design, I like the symmetry that you're going with. Again, that's a snowflake thing. It like makes it feel very perfect. I do feel like the the shapes within the symmetry though could could be more snowflakey. Like we could go further with pushing that ice imagery and you know really have it feel more like a snowflake. No, she's a bug. I'm just kidding. Oh dear. What have I done? You've given her a thorax. Like like that kind of thing or something. Um, just looking at snowflake patterns, like get a bunch of them on this canvas and have a look at them. Um, the shapes at the minute are very soft. And I think if you're going imposing, going something a little bit more like this, where we have like these broad shoulders and sharper shapes, it's probably the way you want to go. Okay, one thing. Is that is that our hands? I just noticed. Yeah, that's something I meant to mention and Whoa. I didn't. But I, I love the huge hands. Like, I actually, I really love them. <laughs> she's got snow shovels for hands. Because it, it almost feels like she's manifested them out of snow and ice. Yeah. Like, you could have these huge hands and then almost like her normal arms go into... Into it. This like ice construction. Yeah. And that's how she attack. Um so I, I really dig that. I think that's a really cool idea. Um and I like that it's an unusual twist too. Because if you don't have that, then it's in danger of being like just pretty woman. Pretty woman. But that's like very unique to her. That's like this strange kind of almost monstrous twist on a pretty lady yeah and the contrast is really nice there yeah yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. i'm into it um big old snow claw hand yeah so i'd say the shapes on this one feel like maybe a little bit too soft um i would love to see we found the dream twist <laughs> <laughs> i'd love to see if you're looking at um we have see <laughs> we have found it um if you're looking at stuff like nordic i would love to see some of the images here that you were pulling from um you see some of the influences being woven in there so uh pretty woman with your giant hands pretty woman you were danger last <laughs> there's my ball oh wow that's fun to say in norse mythology thimble winter commonly referred in english as thimble winter is the immediate prelude to the events of Ragnarok. It means Great Winter. Oh, cool. Thimble Winter. That's very fun to say. So if I look up like Nordic Snowwear, maybe? I'm so bad at Googling. Mike will be able to find this so much Dark faster. Darkbolt's like, so the Ice Age. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, traditional Nordic Snowwear. You'd think I know, but I don't really. Whoop! Hey! I want to find some, some ladies as well. Why are all these so modern? I typed in traditional. Hold on. Traditional. What was your Nordic. Uh, uh, what would you call it? Garb? Garb I mean, that's a good. costume, so I'm not sure how accurate that is. Uh, maybe type historic. Historic. Because things don't get traditional until later than the fact. <laughs> it's true. Tradition is something that um, is almost a stereotype of what it was. Nordic historic um, clothing. That's the word I was looking for. Oh, that's so cool. Look at those shoulder pads. Awesome. So looking at some stuff like this might be a good way to go. 
finding some elements from these that you can weave in. Are you okay, Mike? You're just kind of hitting yourself. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I, the song is playing, so I'm tapping along. Oh, I can't hear it. I can never hear the music anymore, guys. Mike doesn't play it for me. I'm getting lost in, in all of this because it's cool and it's all very different as well like I feel like several different cultures are being smashed together here mm. so you'd probably want to find specifically uh, like Icelandic or yeah, Swedish because or... they're all very different but these search results were including all of them so <laughs> so that I'm getting like a million very very different costumes look at these traditional Icelandic clothes Look at that hat! Effing amazing! Um, but yeah, looking at some stuff like this and weaving that more into the design would be really nice. And sketching over them and figuring out what are the base shapes of this culture dress, you know? Mm -hmm. What what recurs over and over shape language-wise in these cultures? Um, and then using that in your own design. So let's let's hop on. Hop on over. Yes, you kept the huge hands. I'm so happy. Okay, let's have a look. So, superiority, frostbitten, like beautiful. I like the idea of having this like super dark hue to show frostbite. Mm -hmm. um, and then the white outline because it almost feels um, black glass like or spectral. Yeah. Um, icy jewelry, glass mirror shard, uh, violent if provoked. Calm, collected, cold. Hands transform. Love that. Icy wind for the hair. Glittery magic. Glittery magic. Glittery magic. Glittery magic. Tall, fine, regal, yet deadly. Dress that turns into snow. Love that. Love the idea that there just isn't a bottom to the dress. That because she walks through the snow, it just blends seamlessly into the environment. That'd be a really fun thing to do. Light, flowy hair. So yeah, I, I really like, I like where you're going with this. Um, I feel like, again, the shape designs could be pushed on this and you could, um, I think you could look more into like um, the cultural heritage that you were interested in and how the costumes from that would be able to be woven into this. You could look more into metaphor and the folktale mm -hmm. and like pull out elements from that and weave them into the design because uh, at the minute it kind of feels it feels like it's just like attractive lady that you're like how can i make her look snow queenish mm. and there's some really cool unique stuff here um but i think you can pull it out more i keep filling it with pink by accident it's terrible <laughs> love it though <laughs> no i hate it keep doing it wrong you know, like I'd love to know why some of the decisions have been made. Um, I think visually you could, uh, I guess, just refine it a little bit. I think the, the idea is super good. My favorite idea being the huge hands. Yeah, I'm not sure about the like really big trailing hair. Yeah. Thing. I feel like that. It crowds the silhouette. Yeah, like if you if you went super into silhouette, she would look like. Um. Uh, what's that Pokemon that's really freaky looking? <laughs> There's so many of them, Michael. Like the female Mr. Mime, but not the female Mr. Mime, but the one that's similar. Jinx. To Is it Jinx? I don't know. I'm. I mean, Jinx has long hair. Yes. Yes, that's it, Jinx. I think that it's just like, I think it's just like it clashes with this shape. And I really like this shape of this big, huge plume that's behind her head. Because I think that's, that's an elegant way of saying a lot about her. But I think that hair is kicking against it, mm -hmm. you know? I think you want to do something that complements it together rather than trying to smush them both into the same design. So let's see. 
I'm just gonna give her head a quick outline here so I can keep in mind the shape of that. So if you wanted to have um, wind-like hair that's windswept, you could have it like blown to the side instead. Mm -hmm. Or something. Or you could... Ip, 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 ip. I'm trying to find the right layer. There we go. Um, or you could have it tumble down like this. Either down one side or down both sides. Yeah. And hellish. frame her chest with it. But you want to be supporting the other elements in your design. Um... Like, you kind of want everything to weave together. Yeah. Um, elegantly. So if one of your elements is pushing against the other, I think that's what was happening with um, the tail feathers in Zeb's as well. Was they didn't feel like the tail feathers were supporting anything. Yeah, they were like breaking out on their own. Yeah, and I think it's the same with the hair here. Is you want, you want the shapes of the hair to support what you already have going on and if possible, enhance it. You don't want them to fight against it for like dominance over what's most important in the design. So having something that either like frames what you already have anyway or separates itself. Like I'm I think I'm partial to the one with the hair down because I like that whereas the one to the side shows stronger wind, um, it doesn't necessarily actually support anything that's already going on in the design. Yeah. Whereas the one which comes down and kind of cradles the chest area feels more like it's doing work to also support what's going on there. Yeah. So then I'd circle around there probably. Let me move this back over. So I like the hands just uh, just transform. I'm wondering if uh, we could use ice powers to transform them instead. There's something kind of body horror-ish that makes me uncomfortable about the feeling of her hands just swelling up. <laughs> and maybe that's my problem, you know? <laughs> maybe. That's not a design problem. That's just an Indira is squeamish problem. Uh, I would be tempted to to just have them like um ice gloves almost but that is a hundred percent just a taste thing the concept i love um so it, it's up to you which way you want to take it so let's see um i don't really have time to look into a bunch of nordic stuff uh, so I'm not going to be able to really bring that to the design mm -hmm. off the top of my head. But what I can do is, as well as encouraging you to look more into the shape language of, you know, ice and um, snowflakes and bring that more into your character and really try and find the root of why you're using these design elements in the character and what they're saying about the character. Like thinking about Steinies and how much the metaphor there was woven, in, woven into the design. And how much everything in that design said something about the character. I think you want to keep that in mind um, as you're working on this design. And you've got some really cool stuff going on here. Like, I would be tempted to shorten the waist in favour of having this snowdrift just go into the snow and not even have a bottom to the dress. So when people are animating her in the snow, it's just... She just joins to the floor. There's not even... There's nothing. There's nothing at the bottom. Like, I think that could be super cool to just have her coming out of the snow. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just imagining her emerging from a big snow pile and being like, No! Yeah, in fact, I'm wondering if, um, rather than make the dress bigger, what if you went smaller with it? 
um, so that all of the weight of the design hold on there we are it's saving all of the weight of the design is up here so go much more like it's a champagne glass rather than a wine glass you know Because I like the idea, if you're going to have someone who's like, you want her to be tall and imposing. I kind of like the idea of, whoops, of the being like the snowscape here. Mm -hmm. And then this is a person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And she's like. this right she's very tall yeah and i think having um a high waist and almost like a a thinner straighter longer dress amplifies that tallness yeah and makes it feel like a little bit spookier and then add the hand almost so the hands unshrunken would be like this yeah. Sorry, unshrunk, un <laughs> enlarged. The opposite of what I said. Unbeginning. Unbeginning. Take regib, regib. Um. I guess they would be like. I'm trying to see how long they are. Um, it would make sense for them to be super long, right? Because she needs to be able to snatch people's heads off and stuff. Yeah. So, I guess the big hand would be like this kind of thing. Yeah. But I think if you um if you give her a really big poofy dress, not only is it kind of hard to to have it interact with other characters because the dress is like so taking up so much space. Uh but you start to lose things like the hands in the silhouette. Yeah. But I kind of like the the idea of just this like long column almost emerging out of the snow and having everything be drawn up to that larger bulkier shape on top yeah I agree uh. Indy's trying to draw a straight line straight lines are hard to draw I think that also has a nice contrast with her her hair if you wanted to give it like that wind swept curly wavy nature um so for submitting to the anime morning challenge we do it via google form and we post the link to the form on twitter usually um we're going to take a break over the christmas for the next anime morning challenge but, but there'll be one in january that's what's taking a break and more is being like i feel like i don't want to give you guys an anime morning challenge to do over the week of Christmas. Yeah. Like, I want you guys to be able to spend time with either your families or your favorite TV series and any pets you may have. Like, I want you guys to have a nice time relaxing. <laughs> Animal Morning Challenge, don't do any work. You do work, it will destroy you. We'll critique it in the worst possible way. But yeah, I think. Yeah, I think, I think you're that's, done. That's, that's it. So think about contrast, think about shape language, think about what you're saying. What are you saying about your character? I think <laughs> it really helps to, uh, to do these group critiques, though, because you can have a look at other people like who were praised for doing that well and kind of use their examples to see how you could interweave some of the similar kind of stuff into your own design yeah you can you can see how someone was thinking not necessarily what they were thinking about but how they were thinking about it and use the similar technique to extrapolate your own thing we do have a discord but we keep it 
keep it invite only. Yeah, we keep it we keep it small because we've had experiences in the past with people like coming in and, and making people feel uncomfortable. So now we're careful. We got a Discord before it was cool. <laughs> Did we? Yeah. Um. Of, I mean, we got it. We got a Discord for having a community before Discord realized that people were making Discords to have communities. Ogres have layers. That's my that's my Shrek impression. Donkey! I'm so angry! Why, Donkey! Why are you talking to Fiona. me like that? What is going on, you wee bastard? What are you, what are you doing? Is that, is that your Shrek impression? Is Shrek my... would never swear. I can't believe you. Yeah, he would. I can't believe that you would besmirch best boy like that. This is my fucking swamp. <laughs> my swamp? Yeah. Get out of my swamp! <laughs> Get out of my swamp. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yo wee lad. Oh, Inja, look at the ice drawing ice lady drawings from this manga. They are the best one, I think, ice lady, okay. Let me have a look. Ooh, is she pretty? I like the frozen eyelashes. That's a nice touch. Frozen ice, frozen ice eyelashes are good, good thing. I always want to push the designs more in anime and manga though. Like, so many of them feel like the face designs are the same between all characters. Uh, because there's a very particular way to draw noses, a very particular way to draw mouths. Mortal, you have grown old in just a short time. You old man! Which is banger it? is this? Um, uh, Declan's saying like this is what you said. It has no start from the snow. Yeah, she just emerges. Bring it over so we can see. One of your dad's friends is Scottish. Needs a pain to understand when he's been drinking. I think most people are difficult to understand when they've been drinking. Though we slur, people slur. I slur anyway, but. I love those eyelashes and eyes. Like having the eyes and the eyelashes be that cold. I think it's super fun. Bo Kensha na narita to Miyako ni Deteita Musumi. Is that the name of that is such a long name? Hold on, I gotta try. Bo Kensha ni narita to Miyako ni Deteita Deteita Musumi ga estrank. Ni na, na teta? I'm mm, yeah, mm, mm, nah, nah, man. Mm, but that's good. Now, if, we, if anyone wants to Google this, then they can. It is a long name. <laughs> yeah. To point uh, like it's a JoJo character. Have you seen the pose? Yeah, we we watched some JoJo, some JoJo. What do we think about more realistic styles? Hmm. I think you can still incorporate, I think you'd be surprised how strong you can make the shape language um, in realistic designs. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I mean. Show you what I mean. mean, mean doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me show you what I mean, what I mean, what I mean. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to show you what I mean. Going to show you what I mean. The, the, the English translation: the daughter who went to Miyako to become an adventurer became S rank. Became S rank. What does that mean? Shrank. Became shrank. S rank. Are there any upcoming animated shows you guys are excited for? Um. There yeah, there must be. I, I, I can never one, think it... off the top of my head. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> I know one, but it's NDA. Uh, that's a movie, right? Or, no. Or no? No. Okay. Is it? Is it something else I'm potentially involved with? Mm -hmm. I'm also excited for that, but we can't say that. So what's the point? <laughs> um. Let me think. 
I'm all simultaneously googling. I know I one know. That, that I'm excited about that is not upcoming, but is current is has been uh, Rise of the TMNT is very good. It, it, I highly recommend. I was I was talking to my dad about it yesterday, and uh, I'm very enthusiastic telling him about it. <laughs> okay, here we are. So, look at the diversity of these characters and their shape language. Even though a lot of them are wearing very similar things, how different each of them is in their facial design, in their, like, the hair design, the costume design, the way they're posed. Yeah. Like, it says so much about each of the characters. And these are all real humans wearing real clothes. You know, look where someone's decided to leave buttons open or, like, add jewellery or keep buttons up, or like, elongate the hat, or, you know, anything like that to to make the characters more lively. I like how angry Danny DeVito looks. If that, that's Danny where? DeVito, isn't it? Where? Maybe it's not. It's, no, just Danny DeVito wasn't in this movie. Oh, who's, sorry. Who's the angry man then that's next to <laughs> Bill Murray? I don't know names of actors, okay. so I don't know. I'm sorry. I'll um, need to zoom in. It's very small for me on screen. Is it? Yeah. Danny DeVito isn't in the life aquatic. Yes. I don't know then. <laughs> the DeVito wannabe. But, you know, when it comes to what we've just been looking at, these are no more exaggerated than the Snow Queens we were both we were just looking at. Like, mm -hmm. you you can you can totally exaggerate realistic characters, um, and use everything you have at your disposal to say something about them. I think that is a Morticia Adams actress. Look at how wonderful her face is. Like, look yeah. at how square that jaw is. Like, the long hair coming down. Like, over one shoulder, super casually. Her wide-legged stance. The way that her top is like, she hasn't even bothered to button it up properly. The, like, expensive jewellery that's just, like, slung over her. Like, it's nothing. Like, you get to learn so much about her character. And her expression, of course, her like absolutely nonplussed expression. I need to watch this movie. I've never seen it before. You've never seen Life Aquatic? No. I feel like I tried to watch it with you and you might have fallen asleep. Maybe. Which made me sad. I'm sorry. It's okay. I seem to have a thing where every, when every time you want to show me a particular film, I fall asleep. Yeah, it's true. Fell asleep through the life of Quiet. Fell asleep through Mary Poppins. <laughs> Fell asleep through the thing. Yeah. Like, what am I meant to do, man? Yeah, Wes Anderson um, is what I googled. He's he's great to look at for these kinds of exaggerated characters. Because he uses shape language, like, super well. And he's not afraid. Uh to get a bit zany with it. How did you fall asleep to the thing? Right? I just did. I... <laughs> to be fair, I was already very tired before we started watching it. Like, look at these characters. Brilliant. <laughs> look at them! <laughs> Amazing. You know? Anywho, that, that is my two cents on that. In other news, Girl in the Glim is going to get published oh by Oh my gosh, IDW. you really are going to say it every stream. Every <laughs> stream. <laughs> no. Yeah. Every stream. All right. Every stream. All right, guys. Um, I'm done. We're going to go. May the rest of your day be filled with adventure. No. <laughs> Look how cool this is. Oh, Mike, no, come on. Have mercy. Screw you. Michael. No. Look how cool. Look, it's very cool. It's shifting over to me now. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, Swifty says, 
<laughs> the Girl in the Glim is being published by IDW Publishing. I'm so happy and proud to finally be able to shout it from the rooftops. Barely. My first I am. graphic novel. I've done it. I shouted Day. it. And supernatural struggles with Bridget, a quiet young girl trying to fit into a new town. Indy is working on a, ca a comic, you guys. When Mike isn't falling asleep to movies and trying to show him, he's judging me. I'm not judging you. I just I want to raise awareness for the book. People, and people already know. People don't already know. Oh. Okay. Oh, no, okay, okay, okay. I, I agree. Certain, Fine. Certain you win. people in the chat did know. Who, who didn't <laughs> no, know? No, stop. Who didn't know? Stop. I'm finished. I'm done streaming. I'm gonna go. Michael. Michael. What? We need to stop the stream. I don't. I, I, are we stopping? 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 Yeah. Okay. I think so. It's nearly eleven o'clock, and if I'm gonna make the book, I need to have the time to work on it. Okay. I didn't read what Pablo wrote. Did you not? I yeah. thought you did. Oh, wait, I did. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> but no. I'm going to make a whole scene that has this animation on it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. OBS, so I, don't, I can stop going to the Twitter. Retweet this tweet. Get hype. Get hype. Help us. Help us make boop cool. Help us make boop cool. Boop cool. Oh. Night, right, night, lemon, and some oranges. Okay, we're heading off. Thank you so much for coming by. And until next time. Until next time, which might be later today. I don't know. We'll see. I like streaming. I know you do. And I like piggy. Can I just show them the piggy bomb? Uh, yeah, I hadn't you already shown them last stream? Ah, uh, yeah. I might have broken the piggy bomb, so it's fine. Alright, we're heading off. Bye bye. Are we raiding anyone? Mm, yeah, let's raid someone. <laughs> okay. I forgot about <laughs> I forgot about raiding. Who are we raiding, Mike? You choose. I, d I can't see anyone you on my side. You choose. Okay. Don't, you don't know anyone. Um, I only have Table Story, Rubber Ninja, Chobi Look, and Hainers, and they're all offline, so it's your choice. I'm looking. Raccoon Fart, what an awesome name. <laughs> I think I laughed when that follow alert came up. Raccoon Fart. Um, we're gonna go for Nick Waz. Nick Waz is chill. Sounds good to me. <laughs> the smelliest fast in existence. I don't doubt it. I get. I bet I could give the raccoons a run for their money. No. Oh, Live Nocturnal, thank you, thank you for the follow. Oh, it was a while ago. Yeah. Oh, come on! Every time I, like, switch um, Chrome to go from one screen to the other, it, like, takes a day and an age to realize what it's doing. Okay, Raid Channel. Oh, so much pain. Raiding. Nick was. Start raid. Okay. Oh wow. It did that work? It did. Cool. Alright, uh so may the rest of your day be filled with adventure. adventure. Take care everyone. Bye bye. Bye.